At the end of this module, you should be able to identify different motivations for uh, uh, regression modeling. Uh, you should be able to formulate the, the simple linear regression model. Um, you should also understand that the ordinary least squares estimator coincides with the maximum likelihood estimator in the case of uh, linear regression. Um, you should be able to fit a simple linear regression in the statistical software and be able to interpret uh, its output in R or in Stata. And finally, you should be able to compute confidence intervals and use uh, hypothesis tests for uh, regression parameters. So why uh, do we need to use regression uh, models? Well, there's basically three sets of problems that require uh, statistical modeling. Um, the first one, prediction problems. So when we are, have a set of uh, variables and we want to, to use these variables to predict a certain outcome, for example, we might be interested in predicting in hospital mortality for patients that are admitted to the hospital with acute myocardial infarction. So in, in a problem like this, you typically would have clinical variables, you would have demographic variables, and you, you, you would use these variables uh, in a model to try to predict the probability of death. Uh, in a different example, in this study, we looked at patients that received a kidney transplant and we wanted to predict uh, the risk of re recurrent uh, membranous nephropathy in these patients. So we had, again, demographic variables, we had clinical variables, we had variables uh, related with the transplant procedure itself, and we used these variables to uh, predict the, the, the risk of membranous nef nephropathy. A different type of problems is when we want to uh, isolate the effect of one exposure on the outcome, and this effect might be affected by, for example, confounders. Okay, so a confounder is a variable that is associated with, the, with an exposure and the outcome and can mask uh, or can amplify uh, the, the effect of the, the, of the exposure on the outcome. So, for example, in this study, also again in chronic disease, but looking at children with, with chronic disease, we wanted to uh, study the, the academic outcomes of these children and its association with the, the severity of the disease or the stage of the disease. And there's a, um, the data that we had available, observational data, uh, was uh, affected potentially by uh, uh, confounders such as social and economical status. So we know that uh, social economical status would affect the disease progression or the, the disease, disease severity and will also affect uh, the academic performance of the students. So in this case, we want to, um, to estimate the effect of uh, uh, the disease stage on uh, the outcome, on the academic performance of the, the, st the, the students, while taking into account social, social economical status or other variables. And for this, we can use a regression model. And finally, the other type of problems that require a statistical model would be situations where we want to um, use multiple factors and study multi multiple factors and how they interrelate and affect an outcome of interest. So for example, in this study, we wanted to look uh, at uh, different factors and how they were associated with health-related outcomes for patients that, uh, for children that were admitted to pediatric intensive care. So uh, we had, you know, uh, variables such as the age of the patient, but also uh, the, the reason for admi uh, admission to the intensive care and other things that happen during the intensive care. And we wanted to see how all these factors interrelated and affected the health-related quality of life. So we're going to see the first example of a regression model, the simple linear regression. And here I have the measurements of systolic blood pressure and age of 29 individuals. And as you can see from the scatter plot, there is uh, the suggestion of a trend. Older individuals appear to have a higher systolic blood pressure. And this trend actually appears to be linear, meaning that it seems to be well approximated by a line. Now, you may recall that the equation of the line uh, is given by y equals to beta naught plus beta one x. In this case, y would be systolic blood pressure. So we would write that the systolic blood pressure is equal to beta naught plus beta one h. And the interpretation of the, 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 the line parameters, beta naught and beta one, beta naught is called the intercept, and it would be the systolic blood pressure for someone at age zero, which obviously does not have a biological interpretation. And this is actually going to be quite common in, uh, in regression problems. The intercept tends not to have a, a biological interpretation, not always, but in most of the cases. And we don't tend to focus on the, um, the parameters associated with covariance, in this case, age, 
later on that tells us how much the, the systolic blood pressure increases per year of age. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the, 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 equ the equation for a regression. And we're going now to jump to the statistical model because we're going to allow some variability of the systolic blood pressure around this line. So I'm going to write that the systolic blood pressure for individual I, so the YI, is equal to the beta naught plus beta 1x, so the part of the line, uh, plus some variability uh, uh, around that line. Okay, so if, we've, if we look at the specific individuals, uh, individual, we have the part of the equation that, is give, that gives me the, 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 the value at the, the line point, uh, which is the expectation of Y given uh, the age of the individual, so the expected value of the stock blood pressure for individuals of age uh, XI. And then I have the, the residual or the error, uh, which corresponds to the, the, the difference from what is given by the line and the, the actual observation. Okay, so in fact, another way of writing the exactly the same model, just a different way of writing it, would, would be to, to write that the expectation of the systolic blood pressure follows a line, follows beta naught plus uh, uh, beta 1 age, or the mean of the systolic blood pressure uh, uh, as the equation of a line. Okay, these are all the same representations of uh, exactly the same statistical model. We, in the expectation, we tend to drop the xi, just write the expectation of y, because the xi is, uh, uh, is fixed, so we, we can drop it from, from uh, the notation just to is notation. Now, how do we go about uh, estimating uh, the parameters called the regression parameters, the parameters that define the line, beta naught and beta one? And I have here the heads on beta naught and beta one because they're going to be estimated from the data. So the idea is that I want to find the lines, or I want to find the beta one and beta and beta naught that define the line uh, in a way that minimizes the differences to to uh, to the data points. Okay. So basically, I want to I want to uh, minimize the residuals, all those red lines um, that uh, represent the distance from the, each one of the observations to the line. Okay, so I'm going to sum across all these residuals, and because I'm going to have some positive residuals, some negative residuals, I'm going to square it just to get rid of the, the sign of the residuals. Okay, and I want to uh, to minimize this sum of all these residuals. So I so I can rewrite this residual as the difference of the observed value y, y to the value given by the, uh, the, the line, uh, and then find the beta naught and beta 1 that minimizes this expression, this function. Okay, How do we do this? Well, this is a typical mathematical problem of finding a minimum of a function. So I would differentiate this function in order to beta naught and beta 1, which is a very simple problem. Um, and then find the zeros of the, the derivative and then show by the, using the second derivative that then in fact uh, minimums of the function. So I would find uh, a solution for beta naught and beta 1 that would minimize this function. And this solution is called the ordinary least squares. Actually, it has an expression that you can see in the book. So it has a closed form expression for beta naught and beta 1. Uh, and this, uh, this solution is called the ordinary least squares. Okay, and beta naught and beta one hat are called the uh, ordinarily squares estimator or OLS, uh, and sometimes we refer to it in statistics. Okay, so a different way of getting an estimate for beta naught and beta one would be to consider the the, the likelihood. Um, so we would have to put some assumptions on distribution of the of the data. So I'm going in this case to assume that the residuals are normal. Uh, we mean zero and some, some variance. Okay, so the joint distribution of the data, if I assume uh, that the, all the data points are uh, independent, so meaning that each one of the observations does not, is not correlated with other observations, so if I assume that plus this, the distribution assumption, I can write the, the joint distribution for all the data and the likelihood associated with that and then get the maximum uh, uh, likelihood that will give you the maximum likelihood uh, estimate um, for beta naught and beta one. Okay, so just maximizing the likelihood. So, what is interesting is that if we, in fact, assume that the observations are independent, as I said, if we assume that the residuals are normally distributed 
and that the, the, the variances of the, the residuals are always the same. So this is called a homoscedasticity assumption, uh, which is basically tells me that, you know, that the variance or the standard deviation parameter there, the sigma epsilon, it does not depend on the individuals. It's common across all the individuals. If I make these th three assumptions, then the ordinarily squares is exactly the same. So the solution that I get from the ordinarily squares is exactly the same as the maximum likelihood solution. So the both estimators are the same. And because I know the maximum likelihood uh, estimator is, uh, is blue, is the best linear by the estimator, I can, uh, I can conclude that OLS is also blue. And by, by blue, uh, best linear and bias estimator, it means that it's the most efficient estimator uh, that I can obtain uh, within the class of unbiased estimators. Um, so it's the best thing I can do uh, with the data uh, in the restricted situation of unbiased estimators. Okay? So this should give you a uh, brief introduction to the simple linear regression. We're going to see now in the next video how to implement this uh, actually in the statistical software.